Before you begin laying out a page with CSS, you should consider how a browser's default CSS might affect your layout. In the CSS Basics course, you learn that a browser has its own built-in style sheet called a user agent style sheet. It's the CSS a browser applies to a page before you even write a single line of CSS. The browser gives elements like the body, headings, paragraphs, and lists default margin, padding, line height, and font size values. Popular web browsers like Chrome, Firefox, Safari, and Internet Explorer use slightly different default styles in their built-in style sheets, so there will be subtle differences in the way your layout displays in the various browsers. Default heading font sizes and form elements, for example, will look different in some browsers. That's why it's good practice to use a CSS reset in your website. A CSS reset removes the subtle browser inconsistencies in margins, padding, line height, and font sizes to ensure that your layout displays as consistently as possible across all browsers. In other words, it helps your site look the same in Chrome, Firefox, Safari, IE, and Opera. Now, there are different types of CSS reset methods used by web designers and developers. In this lesson, I'm going to cover a popular method called normalize.css. To follow along using Workspaces, launch the Workspace on this page. If you're starting a website project without the assistance of a grid or framework, your website layout usually looks similar to this before writing any CSS of your own. Notice the color of the links, the different font sizes, and the space around the body, headings, paragraphs, and between lines of text. The page is styled, to a limited extent, by the browser's default style sheet to make it appear more readable to users. I'm going to use the CSS reset normalize.css to remove some of these default browser styles, like the extra margin and padding around the page. This will create a level playing field for me to style the layout and help create what's called cross-browser compatibility. It's when your layout looks consistent in all the browsers. Normalize is the CSS reset method used in CSS frameworks like Twitter Bootstrap and Zurb Foundation. You can read more about the styles it resets and the common bugs it fixes on the Normalize website. I included the links in the teacher's notes of this video. So adding Normalize to your project is easy. You simply download the CSS file from the website and link it to your HTML. So I'll click the Download button here and save the CSS file as normalize.css. You should already see a file named normalize Dot CSS inside the CSS folder of this workspace. I'm going to link this style sheet to the index.html file. So right above the link tag that links to the main style sheet, I'll add a new link element that links to normalize.css. And as the href value, I'll type the path to the style sheet, which is CSS forward slash followed by normalize.css. I'm linking the CSS reset above my main CSS file so that I'm able to override any of the normalize resets in my main style sheet if I need to later on. So the normalize style sheet is small, modular, and broken down into independent sections. So it makes it easy to see which elements need specific styles. It's also well documented, so you'll know what each reset rule does and why it's doing it. And if you don't need certain reset rules in your style sheet, you can remove them from the CSS file. Now, what's great is that we can just as easily add reset rules in the style sheet. So for example, I want to remove the margins, padding, and bullets in every list item of my layout. So I'm going to add a custom reset in the normalize.css file. So I'll scroll all the way down to the bottom of the style sheet and add some new CSS. So first I'll copy this tables comment here and paste it at the bottom and I'll change the text to say lists and the description will say remove default list styles margins and padding. I'll add a new rule that targets ordered lists and unordered lists. And I'll set the margin and padding values 
to zero and the list style value to none. Then I'll save my file. So now if we look at this page in every browser, it should look the same because now we forced browsers to match this reset baseline, therefore avoiding subtle cross browser differences as much as possible. So now we're ready to start writing the main layout styles for our web page.